hold on. I think I might have solved it. I'm gonna do this, and if this don't work, that's. Yeah, I can hear you. Do you hear a buzz though? No, it sounds a little muffled. Oh, that's okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone to Marlin Meets Home Edition. I have decided that since the coronavirus has hit, everybody is safer at home. And ladies and gentlemen, before we start, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And most importantly, subscribe. Without further ado, I just want to introduce the man the lord of the house djs <laughs> mr dj cruise control aka justin joseph cruise give him a hand please thank you thank you thank you please all right yeah 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 yeah. yeah. so how you doing cruise how you holding up bro i'm very good man you know obviously we're in this weird quarantine time but i'm making the best of it and i've uh rearranged my studio setup multiple times do you remember the first day we met the first i was actually thinking about this before the first day we met we walked up in class and you came up to me and you asked me if i could be your security guard <laughs> <laughs> and i happily accepted so I'm, I'm still your security guard marlon tell them about college though it was it was it was a fun ride for what it was man i was, I was definitely like looking to advance as i I've, i had one goal in mind mm. going into that school and that's to become the best music producer in the world best part about college man was literally meeting people like you meeting people like spencer and yeah. just meeting all all of our, our all of our friends on there and like the most value i got out of out of going to full sale was the community for sure and look at us I'm, now you know what i mean what i'm telling we still rocking cruise i don't know if you remember Remember, but I was on your show too when you yeah, was doing it. Absolutely. From college, you had these aspirations. I want to be the biggest music producer in the world. What happened? I mean, it's, it's definitely a question I get asked a lot, you know, like, especially when it comes to college, like, did you finish college? And, you know, no, I didn't. After six months, man, like I, I, I felt like a lot of the things that we were learning, I could learn on my on my own and kind of, you know, drive my own uh, path in my career. For me, Full Sail just wasn't doing it. Like I'm not, I'm not knocking Full Sail in any way. I think it's great for a lot of people who did finish, you know. But for me, it just, it just wasn't it. You know, I kind of wanted to uh, push boundaries and break all the rules and kind of do things my way and kind of just go after what I thought would be a, a sustainable career for me. And at the time, you know, obviously I had backlash from my parents. I had backlash from a lot of people for, for not finishing through and all that all that stuff but i had a vision and, I, and, a, and a strong vision that only i can see at the time and you know right obviously over over the years it's come to fru come to fruition a little bit but you know for me i'm just getting started still you know i i i have a lot of things that i wanted to i want to accomplish and along with being the best music producer in the world you know that's a that's a lifelong journey for me Listen. and it's not something that's uh had by winning a grammy or you know going to college or things like that you know those, those awards don't don't hold a lot of weight for me it's all about just kind of just driving my own my own uh my own path there going from college to now what metamorphosis happened what yeah. what did you get a revelation yeah i'd say about a year after i dropped out of full sale i went to Colorado, just on a whim with a couple of friends, just kind of like either lose myself or find myself, however you want to define it. You know, I kind of just went out there on a whim and, you know, I got a job, got a car and just kept pursuing music. And I took a nosedive into the underground scene, like the house underground scene, playing tech house, techno. And I really, really got affiliated there with a nice fan base and a lot of great friends, met a lot of great people. Um, and it turns out my roommate that was living in Florida at the time actually moved to Colorado and became roommates again. So that was a nice little full circle moment. At that point, I kind of like felt out of the mainstream scene. I wasn't really doing anything sustainable, I guess. I, I guess if you want to call it, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but no, um, I was kind of just like, just going with the flow of life, to be honest. You know, I, I really didn't have clear direction. And then, you know, I had multiple conversations with my mother about moving back to New Jersey to kind of hit the reset button. Obviously I was like super resistant about it because, you know, I had such a passion for music and I just wanted to keep going, 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 but it was getting to a point where I was kind of losing myself a little bit and making mistakes and making the same mistakes over and over again and kind of like having too much fun. You know, so I made a, a really, really, really hard decision to actually move back to New Jersey with my family. And I remember having that conversation with my mother on the phone um, about actually deciding that it was time to move back to New Jersey. After three years of Colorado, my actual dream was to keep going west and move into California. I, I felt for me, as soon as I hung up the phone after making that decision, I just broke down in tears. I'm like, man, like I feel like such a failure. I'm coming back with nothing. You know what I mean? Like I, I was broken at that point, you know, I know and, you mean, uh, and, and my father said something really, really 
really great. And he was like, you know, not a lot of people have the opportunity to hit the reset button. And right there, that kind of like, like clicked for me. I gathered myself, got a new car, literally drove to New Jersey mm -hmm. the very next day and hit the reset button. Yeah. I, I, I moved into this little basement here and I just started slowly but surely getting myself together. I got a, I got a job as a DJ for an entertainment company and started actually put, uh, applying my talents in, in a way where I can actually start making a career for myself and start making some money and doing that. And then um, slowly but surely I started realizing that I can actually make a lot of impact with the music and my talents um, that I make. Some of my vision is to use my music in order to create communities, you know, and bring community together. Yes. Um, and slowly but surely, you know, I started to figure out a way on how I can start a business around this. And that's when I founded uh, my company called Cruise Control Music. Now, if you remember, my DJ name used to be Cruise Control. And that yes. kind of like, I twisted that around um, because I wanted my personal brand or DJ name to be Justin Cruz, which it is now. And then my company became Cruise Control Music, which is an audio branding agency. All right, stop right there. We're yep. going to get into that. <laughs> in a minute, I want to kind of go back because there's there's many people in college don't know, not people in college, just people in general, general who don't know what they want to do. Don't right. just just are lost. Kind of talk to them and tell them like some tips of finding themselves or finding what they're good at or just finding their way in life. It's, it's definitely a tough tough conversation to have with, with uh, a lot, lots of people, including myself, you know, but I would say a good, a good place to start is ask yourself what you're doing. And then even more importantly, ask yourself why you're doing it. Ah. And, and when it comes down to the why, I want you to think about the deeper reason as to why you're doing something. Right. And if that reason results to you making your friends or your family happy, or you making more money, and there's no deeper rooted issue that actually provides fulfillment for your own soul, mm. then you might want to reevaluate. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Our conversations back in the day was nothing like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, Cruz has changed for the good, though. And you know what? It took time for you, Cruz. Yeah. It took. It wasn't overnight, right? No, not even close. Not even Man. close. It's, it's it's been a long journey, and I got to say, moving back to New Jersey, I've kind of found a holistic approach when dealing with going inwards. And now mm -hmm. I'm I'm no I'm no I'm no Gandhi. I'm no you know any of those those people. But I have changed a, a, a lot. You know, I'm, I'm very I'm very grateful for the journey. But I have put. The, but to your point, I mean, it, it definitely was not overnight. It's taken me a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of sad moments, a lot of a lot of those up and down roller coaster kind of days to get even close to where I'm at, I'm, I'm at right now. You know what I mean? So tell me this, what's that one thing that keeps you driving? Like when you absolutely, you like, you know what, but get this, I don't want to do it no more. What's that one thing that just keeps you driving towards your goal? It's my why. It's why, yeah. I, why I do it. Break that down for them then. Yeah. Between your what and your why. Your what can be applied to the gifts that you have and like the skills that you that you gain over time. You know what I mean? It's like what it's what you do. Like I am a music producer. I want to be the best music producer in the world. You know, I want to win a Grammy. You know, I want I want to be a radio DJ or you know a radio producer, whatever it is. You know, but. Right. Why, why do you want to do that, right? Mm. And it typically comes down to a, a, your journey as a child or your journey or your upbringing. You know, what, what's the reason you, you want to become a best music producer in the world? And I feel like for me, my why is I feel like I can truly, truly touch uh, the lives of people through our universal language of music. I truly feel like I understand and speak the, the language of music in a different way that I actually can communicate with almost anybody, you know? Utilizing that with my skills of bringing communities together will essentially change the way we hear music and to change the way we actually interact with each other and change the way we talk to each other and change the way we love each other for the greater good. Give it up for Cruz one time, everybody. <laughs> Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk about your begin like your beginning beginning days yeah. when's when's the first time uh crews spend a record or dj'd or got into you know dj i'll bring it back to when i was a kid because i still remember making my first beat ever what'd you make it on it was, it was on a toy i forget what toy i think it was like one of those swirly toys where you put the ball and it kind of goes around like that yeah how you made a beat with that i was i took the ball and i started banging on it and i just started making out making a beat with that you know but before that my mother was a professional singer you know she used to sing 
uh, live events with me in her belly, you know? So like the music has been with me way before in I was the womb. here. Yeah, in the womb, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, she used to sing to me all the time when I was a kid, you know, she got me into R&B, classical, jazz, like the actual roots of music, which I'm very, very grateful for. So right. I feel like that's where all my talents come from. Um, and then my father, he, he loved music too. He's more like on the electronic side with house and things like that. But he also had a love for all different kinds of music, you know? So both my parents were very versatile in the, in the music industry. And then my sister being a dancer, I was, you know, a classical dancer and then doing some hip hop and jazz and things like that. Like I was just surrounded by it. Slowly but surely, you know, I took drum lessons then I took piano lessons, just kept working. And then, you know, when I became a teenager is when I started to take, take my own path and like finding the little free programs, I can start remixing songs. It was kind of like a, a bad deal for me in high school because, you know, the high school days when you make the, the best beats, you know, that's where you like really find yourself and you find your, your, your rapper of a friend, shout out to Dougie F. Actually, he's doing huge things right now. That's what's up. Yeah, I'd say 15 or 16 is when I started messing with Fruity Loops for the first time. That's so, the one I started on too. Actually, it was, it was in this house, actually right upstairs. And I was just like, man, this is really, really cool. And for me, I have such a, a math and science kind of mind. Like it, it just made sense for me, you know, like it's just patterns, it's just like rhythm, you know? So between that and, and another DJ software called, I think it was called DJ, I kind of just started taking songs that were on the radio and just mixing them together. DJ. Yeah, just, just DJ, that's it, you know? Um, but I was yeah, just taking songs and making my own remixes, like my own little mashups and putting them on SoundCloud and people started liking them. It wasn't about the clout for me. It wasn't about just like, you know, getting numbers. It was kind of just like allowing people to enjoy it and like saying here, like, this is this is pretty cool. What do you think right. about this? You know what I mean? So, right. and that's how I still approach it nowadays. Like for me, it's like, you know, I, I've, I've gotten smarter about the marketing aspect and like what works for numbers and things like that. But for me, it's just like still building a catalog of music for people to enjoy, you know? So yeah, and then after that, I mean, 18, my father got me my first DJ mixer and that's when my professional career actually took off. All right, describe that Christmas. You he put was it for Christmas? Christmas. I didn't know that my dad was actually watching how invested I was into music at the time. Yep. So then he completely cro like caught me by surprise. I opened it. I was like, what is it? What? Like, <laughs> I was so excited, but so confused at the same time. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But immediately, man, like, I'm sure if I were, were to have a camera in that room, you could just see how fixated I became in mixing music for real now. What would you say would be the most frustrating thing about being an artist? I'd say the, the most frustrating thing is when you have a really awesome idea for some reason you just can't get it out or you can't finish the track i think not not being able to finish the track is, is a frustration that we a lot of us go through you know what? Um, it's called it's called like that 90 percent syndrome where hey man like, here's the reality bro it's that there's never an end point to art right there, there can you can either always add something you can always subtract something so like actually putting a stop on the song and saying that's it i'm gonna let this ride is one of the hardest things to do you know Come what i'm on, saying you're preaching now you preach yeah. Come on now. Something also I've developed to actually help me. Oh, it. shout out your track right now. Don't be scared. I almost forgot the title for a second. <laughs> oh, don't don't be scared on Spotify. <laughs> Spotify, check it out, y'all. We'll actually, it's, it's on it's on all platforms. On Apple all music, platforms, y'all yeah. go check out Justin Cruz's music. I'm telling you, he makes music. He told me this personally, but it's it's true. He makes music you can see. He <laughs> makes music that you can see. Once you hear, you be like, man, I see mountain and hills, and I feel like I'm a superhero. <laughs> y'all gotta go check out his music. It's great. Continue. I'm sorry, cut y'all. No, 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 no worries, man. A lot of times when we start making music we become so analytical we're analyzing everything whether we're at the club whether we're in their car whether we're producing it we just start analyzing things because we're like man i want to create that how do i create that blah 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 it's training yourself on how to be analytical during the, during the times you need to be analytical mm -hmm. and then training yourself on how to just listen we owe as artists we owe the world our pro our progress like let's show them what we're actually up to and like let's put something out and be like here have a taste while i work on the next thing then here have a taste while i work on the next thing and right. over time people we're going to start seeing your progress. Man, one time for Cruz, man. Y'all give it up for <laughs> Cruz, man. Dropping this knowledge for these artists out here. All right, all right. Best thing, best thing about being an artist. Being, just being able to be free to create your own music, honestly. I mean, there you go. That, there's, you, you know what it is? It's it's not having the boundaries. There's no laws to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. No laws. So you, you, you create what you want. You create, you know, how long you want it. How, you know, there's, there's no laws. I, I love the freedom inside being an artist. That's what it is. That's good stuff, bro. So tell me, well, what's the importance of fitness? is playing 
and in your life. It's played a very, very important role in my life. And <clears throat> here's the thing. I am a very, com I have a very competitive spirit. So naturally I'm just like into fitness just because I want to see how far I can take my body. However, at the same time over the last year, like I said, I've taken a holistic approach to, to my life. What I've discovered is that there's a lot of energy that's stored inside of our muscle tissues or tissue in general right and, and in order for us to actually evolve and 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 learn things and unlearn things we have to move that energy around in, inside of our tissue that's why it's super important for us to move i i always recommend move the first time of the day because you get that energy loose you know what i'm saying you get all that energy loose so whether you want to meditate after that you want to journal after that you want to make music after that you want to cook after that you're you're, you're pouring that energy into whatever you're doing and, and you know what cruz that's true because i remember when i used to wake up in the morning after i worked out but all right i'm ready to take on the world let me exactly. clean up my room right. let me make some music let me that's true right there man and that's it gives music. you and it gives you a sense of confidence too you know what i mean and what one, one quote i i heard was it's very simple but something to remember is that the issue is in the tissue right oh I'm still in that one. Yeah. I'm going to just say it for no reason. I mean, y'all know what? The issue <laughs> is in the tissue. And I <laughs> and I made that up myself. So and I ain't thought. <laughs> who, who you heard that from? Because I don't want them coming after me. I, 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 I heard it off an Instagram quote, and I can't remember who said it. But well, uh, it's up for grabs now. If it's yeah. on Instagram, it's up for grabs. But uh, I've 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 taken on fitness, not in the sense where I'm like powerlifting and doing all that stuff anymore. It's just really any sort of movement that's going to get that energy flowing through. So I've taken on things like animal flow, yoga, uh, deep stretching, you know, things of that nature, just to really get that stuff around. Not everything has to be like a like you're training for an. I, I, an iron man you know what i mean you don't have to right. run for three hours or you don't have to run 16 miles you know what i'm saying it's just get moving we got one more question for you cruz i'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you off here Come no on, man. i know you're a busy I, I, man you I, have, like, no, I have nothing to do got a, you got a lot of things to do i know you got a schedule <laughs> Because you, I seen you, you be planning out your day, 5 a.m. I said, this man is crazy. I'm getting up at least at once. <laughs> it's, it's, it's moved to 7 a.m. now. Hey. Not, not so much 5 anymore. Right. <laughs> oh, is that your puppy? Hello. Oh, yeah. Who is that? He's making his debut. <laughs> oh, look at his little tail. He know you talk about him, too. I wish uh, Leia, she sleep. I got to show you my husky one day. How's the influence of your parents played in your life? Oh, dramatic influence. That's a great question, Marlon. That's a great question because it's actually a question that's kind of the answer has kind of evolved over the years. If you had asked me that question when I was first going to college and I first told my parents I was going to well, wanted to be a DJ, <laughs> that answer would have been different because, you know, I would have been like, I would have been like, screw them. Like, they don't know what they're talking about. Things like that. However, <laughs> my parents have always always been there for me they've always supported me even though they, they wouldn't agree with me or whatever it is like we got into our quarrels but they've always loved me they were always there for me over time i'm realizing that their way of up you know upbringing has literally programmed me to have the the traits and characteristics that i have today and caring for people and you know being a hard worker and going after things and you know being successful and things like that you know and 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 having wisdom and being open-minded being understanding you know like my parents are literally my rocks you know i could not i would not be here without them at all you know my, my dad is invested into my company my mom has invested her wisdom mm. into my soul time and time and again and she's been understanding and you know regardless of what has transpired she's always had my back at the end of the day same with my dad you know like shout out to them because they are Ooh, excuse my yeah life. no no that's fine i got i got the bleepers <laughs> yeah. hey man shout out shout out shout out to mr and mrs cruz man shout out to all the parents all over the world holding it down for their kids my parents too as well you already know but i want to thank <laughs> cruz man y'all i want to thank cruz for being on the show man Dropping well, thank his you so much man. for having me man I, I really really appreciate it and like having this conversation with you is always is always a pleasure i've really really enjoyed this conversation hey shout out your instagram handle follow me at i am justin cruz and then also my company page cruise control music if you hit my link in my bio on instagram you'll see everything there <laughs> just go to his his uh instagram people it's all there ladies and gentlemen justin joseph cruz your name is just are you the second or the first i'm the i'm the first wait because i know your dad's name is justin but it's no different... no he's he's joseph cruz and that which is my middle name wait so is he joseph justin no he's just joseph cruz <laughs> <laughs> That would be don't funny. tell him I said that. <laughs> don't your dad just as ripped as you are. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Man, y'all like, subscribe, comment. Y'all really comment and tell us what y'all think about these conversations. All right, y'all. We're gonna see you next week. Say it, Cruz. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, Cruz. It's supposed to be.
Happy. Uh, we'll see you next week on Marlon Meeks. You don't watch my YouTube videos. <laughs> I didn't watch the ending part. <laughs> you got to get to the end. That's the best part. We'll see you next week on Marlon Meeks. Hey. Hey.